lose your parents to understand how key they are in your life. You understand that? Yeah, those that have lost a single parent or both, you will understand that the person that you took for granted, because parents are a covering to you. Yeah, they're covering to you. You'll be surprised. Even a parent who does nothing, yeah, remove them from the scene. You will know, oh, a mother is gone or a father is gone. I cannot tell you who's greater, a father and mother. Both of them are equally important in their respective ways. A mother is out of the scene, you will feel it. I don't care how old you are. You may be 60. If your mother passes on, you will realize somebody great was in my life. Yeah. And you will never fill that vacuum with anything other than a, a mother. Mm -hmm. A father too. Fathers are very key. Some of you think fathers are useless, isn't it? <laughs> fathers are very, very important to you. All fathers and potential fathers. These men that are around, when they tend to be fathers, they become key in your life. So there is a need to honor them. Don't honor them while they're dead and you buy big coffins and, and you speechify. Let them know while they live that they are honored. So this word, therefore, either opens blessings for you or shuts blessings in your life. You understand that? Okay. I want today to talk about a certain man in the Bible. And I want to read about this man. He's a very strange man. And his name is Jabez. You will notice something about this dude here that will shock you. First Chronicles 4, verses 9 and 10. If you are a reader of the Bible, you'll understand that the book of Chronicles is not easy to read. I've read it myself over 20 times, 21 times. I make sure that I read it. I make sure that I try to understand these names that are mentioned there. If you read it and you are sleepy, you fall asleep on the book of Chronicles. Because it mentions all these names, one, two, and three, some of them you don't understand. So as you read, it mentions names and names and names, and you're thinking, my God, uh, the Holy Spirit is so detailed. So detailed as to mention these names, they must be very key. And in that line of names, boom, when it comes to verses 9 and 10 there, it changes. <laughs> A certain man is introduced. But I want us to read it in the message version. Maybe it brings what I'm looking for. First Chronicles 4, verse 9 and 10. Right, it read, Jabez was a better man, a better man than his brothers, yet he was Jabez. The Hebrew word for Jabez is pain maker. A better man than his brothers, why? Because he was a man of honor. Mm. He became better because he was a man of honor. Hey, his mother had named him Jabez O oh, the pain, saying a painful birth, I bore him in great pain. Mm. Watch verse 10. Then this dude here prayed to the God of Israel and he prayed a prayer that's known everywhere. And this prayer can be broken into four divisions. It's a simple prayer. It says, bless me, oh bless me. Give me land, large tracts of land, and provide personal protection. Don't let evil hurt me. And it closes by saying, God had him. <laughs> God had him. You just need to break that scripture or those two verses into four to understand what this meant. You remember in the days of the Bible, names were not casually given. Yeah. Hmm. You will not just think of an actor on television or Suellen or Dallas and, and so most of you your names are mentioned or named after what your mother saw on television. They decided, you know, oh, <laughs> some of you are Michael because your mother loved Michael Jackson. Your mother had a crush on Michael Jackson. 
Oh yeah, if you don't merit your dead, your mother had a secret crush. <laughs> Some of you are named Jermaine because of Jermaine checks. Mm. Some of you are named after mentioned these these expired superstars. Who are these? Some of them. Uh, sorry, Lionel. Oh, yeah. Lionel because those Lionel rich. Some of you are name, named Pele because you of Pele. Yeah. It's Sylvester Stallone. We have a Sylvester here. Okay. <laughs> we have a Dr. Rambo in our miss. Yeah. She's not here today because of these superstars. So Africans and the Israelis, their cultures are almost similar. In African culture, you can be given a name because of the circumstances, prevailing circumstances. I know a guy called Msindo because there was lots of noise in their home. So they just said, oh, you, Msindo and Msindo. Parents were careless with names. And yet names can be very, let me touch this now. And yet names can be very prophetical. When you give your child a name, think about it before you just release any name. Mm. Some people have had to change their names down the line because their names were prophesying. Prophesying not so good a thing. Prophesying evil, prophesying death. Mm. <laughs> Sconja, or Makombisa, mm. <laughs> or Matanya, or there was a relative of uh, someone that I know, Mtanziso, because he used to stand. <laughs> yeah, so, I don't know what happens with the elderly. The elderly can just decide to throw a name at you not knowing that name can shape your life because names become prophetic then and it will take time or to find ministers that understand this to break the power in that name that was given to you mm. yeah, you cannot be given a name like Hure <laughs> oh, <gee. laughs> mm. yeah, there are many namus Namu, namu. So they are saying you will suffer the rest of your life. Mm. Hey, what? And you are given that name. The names are very strange. And those names live with you and they shape your life. And you find that automatically you behave according to the meaning of that name. Mm. I pray that God breaks the meaning or the bad meaning of your name if your name means anything bad so Jabez was born in pain I don't know what type of pain that the mother may have faced yeah it could have been the physical pain in carrying this dude called Jabez it could be that the father left the mother the moment it was declared that the mother was two months pregnant or three months pregnant. The father said, oh no, this is not my child. Don't talk to me, don't call me, I will call you. And just disappeared. You know what guys do, isn't it? Mm. The moment guys, ladies mention pregnancy, irresponsible guys disappear. Yeah, they, they lose even the appetite of sex. Yeah. Because something has happened and they just disappear. It could be that that pay. It could be that uh, Jabez was born and raised by the mother and the father just appeared to say, ah, let me check the face and the forehead. I don't think this forehead is mine. That's how Africans run away from their children. Yeah, this forehead is not mine. And therefore, uh, and the aunts come in and say, no, no, it's not yours. No one, no aunt has sense enough to ask. Did you actually have sexual intercourse with this person? Yeah, all they are there is to judge the forehead, the eyes. No one in our clan has these eyes. And therefore, the lady is left alone. For some of you, I'm talking about things that have affected you here, isn't it? Mm. Whereby a guy has just left you. Mm. So that is pain enough. Or oh, born when things were hard for the mother. And therefore, she could not... She could not afford to go to a proper hospital to deliver uh, this man called Jabez. Nevertheless, the mother decided, I, I, I'm thinking in anger, you are pain. You are sorrow maker. Yeah, that's what you are to me. 
when I ever look at you sorrow and their mothers today 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 that look at their children and attach them to the circumstances between them and the boyfriend prevailing at that time and therefore they are angry with that child yeah there are many mothers that are angry with their children why did you come why did I ever allow that man to come into my life and look at you you are the result of that pain and therefore I don't like you mm, I don't like you at all and the children pick it up they pick it in the womb but they also pick it when they're outside and therefore they develop a rejection complex yeah, you can imagine this man carrying such a prophetic name. You imagine Jacob. Jacob was assumed like Chit, a con man, a kubuzela. Jacob had a name like that. And he truly was like that. It took him contending with God, fighting with God for God to change his name. And God said, starting today, you are not going to be called Jacob. You are going to be Israel. Why? Because you fought and prevailed with God. You understand that? <laughs> so Jabez is born in pain and he grows up in pain and you can imagine he's playing with young boys and the mother calls him hey sorrow maker come over here and the boys look at him and they jeer at him say sorrow go sorrow <laughs> not zorro but sorrow <laughs> zorro writes again but sorrow is sorrow and this guy is surrounded with misery wherever he went caused misery if he approached a lady trying to be cool, the lady said, oh, oh, Dracula, go away from me, miser. I don't want to see you. <laughs> Until he came to a situation where he was not happy with this status quo. He was very, very angry. Yeah, he must have been a very bitter man, very angry man. And he then decided, you know what? I want this thing to change. It's always a miracle time when you come to a point where you say, I am tired of this status quo. As long as you are happy with what's happening in your life, negative wise, or things that are happening in your life that are negative, nothing changes. Yeah. But when you come to a point where you are saying, I am tired, Lord, I need this thing broken off my life. I need this thing broken off my family. For some it's family. It's disaster after disaster. You check your bloodline, you check your sisters, you check your brothers, everybody is going the same way. Yeah, addiction, drugs, failure, addiction, drugs, failure, and seven children, different fathers. That then is undesirable. Yeah. Yeah. Someone like you who's listening to me preaching this evening must come to a point where you begin to contend for your family Amen. and say, I don't like what's happening in my situation. I don't like what's happening in my family. And since I know the Lord, I believe I'm the one to change Amen. the fortunes of my family. Amen. You rise up in anger. Because if you don't rise up in anger, there is an iniquity that is coming through. Jabez could have passed that iniquity to his children. Sorrow and sorrow maker and pain and rejection. But Jabez said, you know what? <laughs> I know this God of Israel. There may be names here written that are boring that I can't even understand. Shuma, Shamas, Sh they are listed down there. But it comes to a man that was in contact with God. From these names that we don't even know their meanings, Verse 9 and 10, it changes. After verse 10, it goes back to the names. Because somebody lived to want to change the story. Why? Because he said, even though I'm born in sorrow, I must maintain honor. I don't know the circumstances that are facing you. You may be faced with very difficult circumstances. That's not the reason to walk in dishonor. That's not the reason to dishonor people because you are angry and bitter. Some people are very bitter. The person sitting next to you can be very, very bitter. They're angry because of their past. They're angry because of the circumstances they grew up in. And therefore, each time you try to be good to them, have you not met people that you try to greet and say, hello, how are you? They lash out, very angry. They're, they're carrying the Japanese spirit, except that they don't have honor. And this man had honor. 
and he prays a prayer. This prayer is a dangerous prayer because it storms literally the gates of heaven and God moves on behalf of this man in a miraculous way to change his life and to change everything about him. Here is point number one. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. <laughs> Can you see the emphasis of this man? He doesn't just want a blessing. He wants a blessing indeed. In the very so that those who have known me as a loser, as a sorrow maker, but I've maintained my honor. I'm a man of honor. Lord, since honor is part of my nature, bless me indeed, so that everybody else will know that I have been blessed. And there is the key to changing the status quo. Bless me indeed. Say it with me. Bless me indeed. I will now turn that so good. I will bless me indeed. Bless me indeed. Oh, bless me indeed. And that prayer was heard by God. It's very urgent. It's a plea. He is not really negotiating here. He is like a commander. Bless me indeed. I can't stand this. I can't stand the status quo. Look at everybody laughing at me. Look at the hardships that I've gone through because of this name. Look at the doors that have closed because of this name. Look at the friends that have run away from me because if Jabez was your friend, he will bring sorrow into your life. Yes. If ever you fell in love with Jabez, you are in trouble. Yes. Sorrow will come to you. Yeah. People will be after you because of this man called Jabez. And therefore he said, you know what? I'm just tired of this name bless me lord and bless me in a special way to bless therefore in the biblical sense means to ask for or to impart supernatural favor that's what this man was asking i'm a man of honor how can i live like this my mother prophesied failure in my life please mothers and fathers never prophesy failure either in word or in jest, jokingly, over your children. If you have no good words to say, just keep quiet. Talk to that man next to you, old lady. If you have no words to say, just keep quiet. Just keep quiet. Oh, that you bless me and bless me indeed. And that is the prayer of this man who wants this yoke broken over his life. To bless also means to be empowered to succeed. That's why he asked for blessing. He had been empowered to fail. When you have been prophetically given a name that drives you to failure, no matter what you do, you're failing. Unless you invoke a supernatural element in your life that overrides the negative in your life, then you're set free. Say amen. Hey, it's a difficult thing to walk around with your noose over your neck, around your neck. You are in trouble. You cannot go anywhere. Proverbs 10, 22 states, The Lord's blessing is our greatest wealth. Put that scripture, please. The Lord's blessing is our, page nine, page nine. The Lord's blessing is our greatest wealth wealth all our work adds nothing to it that means really you cannot work towards the blessings of God it just comes over your life as you honor and honor is one of the keys there are many keys but this thing called honor that we're talking about will cause that blessing to come over your life let's read that scripture again the Lord's blessing is our what greatest wealth don't look for money because money is in blessing yeah 
Once God blesses his blessing over your life, no matter where you live, no matter where you go, no matter how down people want to put you, oh, you will always come up in the name of Jesus. Say amen. amen. Because a man of honor, a woman of honor will never be put down. They have this thing called the blessing of the Lord over their life. In the name of Jesus Christ. You may see someone succeeding. Get to understand that if they are succeeding because of the blessing of God, please don't try to pull them down. The more you pull them down, it's like you are adding fire to their blessing. And their blessings begin to be enlarged in the name of Jesus. Say amen. amen. The more you try to pull them down, it's like you are elevating them. Each time you talk about them, it's like God is hearing you and God is saying, let me show you what I can do more than what I did yesterday. And you begin to see them succeed. I'm sure many of us here will attest to the fact that you have seen someone doing very well and you have envied them. And you wish, you know what, they didn't have what they have. And you talk about them and you watch them going up and up. It seems the more you talk about them, the more they go up. And the more God blesses them because there is power in blessing that's why the israelites understood this that before they died they will call and gather their children and bless them they may not have left them anything but just the spoken blessing there is power in the spoken blessing when you see no that's not how to die. <laughs> you, never heard, you never saw that one coming, eh? You <laughs> Because I, I say this because I hate someone who did this with them. Yeah. And what? 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 Look at Jacob in Israel. He gathers in Egypt. He gathers them. He blesses them. Have you ever read the blessings of, of, of Jacob to the children of Israel? He imparts blessings. Yeah. Blessing after blessing after blessing. He may not have left them material things, but the old man left them something to hold on to. Blessings. And you see those blessings. Moses in Deuteronomy, he picks the same blessings. And he begins to bless them. Hey, can I tell you this? When you have the blessing of God jumpers over your life, I'm calling you jumpers because you have issues in your life. But maintain honor. Maintain honor. Honor is a glue that causes blessings to stick. Blessings can never stick on dishonor. They stay better when there is honor. When a blessing finds an honorable woman, they say, it says, feel in Kaya. says, it says, it is we are here for good. And they stay. Amen. Blessings leave where there is dishonor. And this man was honorable. In spite of the pain. In spite of everything that he went through as a young man. The pain of the month. The frustration of the month. The end of the month. But this man says, I am not dying this way. I'm not bitter with my mother. I don't read Chappie saying, oh, you woman, why did you do this? And that? No, Chappie is an honorable man. He understands that as an honorable man, you can never kiss your mother. Mm -hmm. Never kiss your father. I know some of you, you have absent fathers. They left. They don't help you at all. Mm -hmm. They don't have, they've since married someone and you are there, you write and talk to them. School officer, I was counseling a young lady. She said to me, I helped her, I ended up helping her, uh, help to buy a ticket. She's, she's gone, she's gone abroad. I said, look, I was moved by her story. And her story is this, that Bishop, I met my father right here in town. I greeted my father, my father just looked aside. Your father. I just felt something rising on the inside of me. I said, where is that rascal who does that? So he turned aside. When you are greeting him, see, a lady like that can be so resentful. I took time to counsel her and say, that man is your father. 
If you curse that man, you are in trouble yourself. So Jabez never did that. And Jabez prays a prayer to change his circumstances. Bless me. And bless me indeed. Some of you need to be blessed indeed. So that your circumstances can change in the name of Jesus Christ. And the radical nature of this man in terms of his prayers changes everything around him. James 4 verse 2 reads, You do not have because you do not ask, says Apostle James. Ask. And when you are asking, you are asking in this radical nature. So Jack Bess therefore not only wanted a blessing that will redefine his life, but he wanted what we call a generational blessing. May your blessing never die with you. The moment you die, it's gone. May it be a generational one. Mm. May it be a generational one. We see the blessing of David, generational. Uh, son after grandson of David and God is angry with them I will kill you you are a dirty stinking rat I want to destroy you and then he says for the sake of David I will not do that that's a generational blessing that's coming through some of you seated here you don't know why you're in church there was a grandmother that prayed for you long back yeah. I miss witchcraft in your family but that grandmother said you know what I will save God she used to go to Methodist Church or Salvation Army or Whistle or any other of these denominations. But she knew God. She knew to pray. And she prayed for you. And that's why you fail and you find yourself running to church. Fail again, you find yourself here. Fail again, you find yourself. Somebody held you up in prayer. And it is that blessing that has sustained you, that has kept you. It's called the generational blessing. Number two. All that you would enlarge my territory. How oh, I love this man. By enlarging his territory, he says, maybe I had one chicken. Please, Lord, change that. Maybe a Hamara. <laughs> maybe a Martha. I was talking to Martha now. Where's Martha? You're welcome to church, man. Maybe Ivan and what? What is this big one? Ivan. Uh, Charles Stewart. Charles Stewart. Mm. Ukuru. Eh, eh. Chap is in one chicken. He says, I want the change. I want to own the hatcheries. I want to be the one owning them. Yeah. I don't want to be happy looking at one chicken and saying, Lord, change that for me. <laughs> change that for me, Lord, and enlarge my territories. You may have had one piece of land. May God give you more and enlarge it. <laughs> You may have one business, a small business. You're selling sweets from a box. May God make you a former Arinel that is not ever here in Zimbabwe and enlarge your territories and make you big. So he wanted his boundaries to be extended. Ladies and gentlemen, when your boundaries are extended, it means God has honored you. You can be a church, a minister. Lord, enlarge my church. I'm tired of one church. I need many churches. I'm tired of few congregants. I need many congregants. Yeah. And then God hears you and enlarges you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Say amen. amen. Enlargement is a wonderful thing. Because when you are enlarged, everybody can see that you are enlarged. You are so enlarged that even your neighbors talk about you. Even many people spend time talking about you. Yeah. Because when you begin to hear people talking about you and your name is on their lips all the time, you know you're a big person. When no one talks about you, you're still small. <laughs> Please look at your neighbor and say, who's talking about you? <laughs> it's a measure of the blessing of God and the enlargement of God. Who is talking about you? Ask the other one and say, who else this week talked about you and said, hey, sh we are such a lot. Normally in the African culture, if you hear people saying you are proud, they mean you are big. Uh -huh. They are failing to say you are big. They want to attach the name proud. Uh -huh. Oh, may God bless you. All oh, that you will enlarge my 
territory. Ha! Do a prophetic mind for me. Stretch those hands. Stretch them. See, I was with the but stretch them. So Jabez was tired of being a lodger. Hey, good Zimbabwe lodger. Ungabuya abagan makuba ku vagachele makulu mele pezu labana makulu mele pezu ilendot ya sali we agu. In fact, ile ubi tisen lendot ko na pana li kulu me we are la pezu. Li kulu me la pezu li pe. Li be was good as when the li li is our voice. Hey. It's a difficult thing. If three of your friends come in and the landlord is not happy, and knock at the door, so kacha bantu bakuwala ngani zimbuzi kwin pagat kuna. Loud music we are told. Everything you are told. If it's a raining season, you enter into the house with muddy shoes. Kangela pela bantu vuti chet. Ukubu vuti pela le yinzo. In other words, they'll be telling you, is it your house? Oh, I'm just provoking you. May, before you die, that you have some property somewhere in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Say amen. amen. Don't be content. Even if it's a small house. When I say small house, I don't mean small house. <laughs> well, I'm talking of a, a, let me use the word, a small dwelling. Mm. Because when I'm at Rezid, hallelujah. Even if it's a small dwelling, yeah, a small dwelling, whereby just it's half of your head, sorry, half of your body inside, and the other half outside, it's yours. Start from there. It's called property. From there on, you move in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever you do, start with that. If some of you young guys have fallen in love with a girl, begin to dream with her. Tell her, let's move around. Find a sebab. I don't know what sebab you love. Some people love nothing. Some people love Queens Park East. Some people love Queens Park West. Some people love nothing. Some people love hillside. Some people like Fumon. Fumon. Just drive around and say, "In Green Jungle, I I took my girlfriend, which wife now, to Morningside. I said, "Can you see this? Yeah, I will buy you one of these houses." Yeah, she believed me. Yeah, she believed me. She looked at me. She never doubted. She said, yeah, that's what I want to buy you. I want to buy you a house one of these days. Yeah, I'll buy you a house. She believed me totally, even though inside I didn't believe myself. But I just... <laughs> Thank God for a wife, who be, for a girlfriend who believes in you. Yeah. I was trying to enlarge your vision to say, if you stay with me and walk with me, this is what I'll do. All right. yeah. Just stay. I'm poor now. Yeah, you have money. She had more money than me. Uh, yeah, you have money. I don't have money. But I can see days that are coming where the roles will be reversed. I'll have money, I'll look after. So, so, so stay with me. Because there was competition in the spirit. There were guys coming from Harare yeah, just to look at her and go back. <laughs> you, know, you know, guys are crazy. Yeah. <laughs> just to look at her and just come and look at her. Yeah, driving BMWs. I was driving a BM2. <laughs> so walking. Mm. I got yeah. So I say, stay, stay here. Don't, don't do anything. Ladies need assurance. Okay. Yeah. Otherwise they fly. They have wings. Many ladies have wings. All right. Oh, they have wings. I told you last Tuesday here yeah, that ladies can pack seven guys seven. around. Yeah. And you are the guy in, 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 the, in the driving seat for some time. But they're looking. Where are we going? <laughs> but Joe is doing better. They dump you today. They are with Joe tomorrow. Go on. Mm. Yeah. So understand that and therefore make sure that your territories are enlarged. I want you to lift up your hands with me and say, Lord Jesus, enlarge my territories in the name of Jesus. Amen. So for Jabez, he may have had heads, but he wanted them increased. He may have fence lines because he was talking of his boundaries here. He must have wanted them in increased. Property, he wanted them enlarged. Workers, he wanted them increased. And therefore, he recalculated his potential. And he said, in that, I need increase in Jesus' name. 
May I say this about your God and my God. He is a God of increase. Amen. Yeah, he is a God of increase. Amen. Please, don't forget that. But that increase springs forth better from this thing called honor. Say honor. honor. Say it again. Say honor. honor. Number three. Oh, that your hand will be with me. If you understand scripture, the hand of God speaks of God's presence, God's power. Two things, God's presence, God's power. When God enlarges you, you then need God's presence. I have seen many people blessed outside or out of the presence of God. They came to God, they were broke, they were humble, they had nothing. They used to fast, they used to come to the house of God, they used to love God, they used to wake up in the morning and pray. The moment God has done stage two on them and enlarged their territories, Ah, that's the end of them. They're gone. Jabez understands security measures around the issues of blessing. When God blesses you, please ask that his presence be around you. Because all human beings are fools without the presence of God, especially those that have blessings. The moment God blesses you, you don't know what's inside of you until you have blessings of God. You don't know. You don't know. Many people look good Christians. Give them blessings. Give them money. Money is an amplifier. Talk to your neighbor and say, money is an amplifier. Yeah. You don't know how mean you are until you have money. Yeah. You don't know how proud you are until you have money. Many ladies and men that you think are proud are humble now oh no they are not humble they are just broke yeah. yeah they are broke that's why you see them kind thankful and so forth all that if you want to see a person who's humble see them with money and resources if they maintain what you knew of them then god has done a work in their lives yeah Many people today, even the person sitting next to you, tell them, say, I don't know you very well, you. Just tell them, I don't know you. <laughs> yeah. the, the day, the day, the day you will have one million dollars, I want you to think of this. The day you will have one million dollars, do you think you'll be here writing notes on a Tuesday? You have one million dollars. You'll be telling me, I oh, see my, my investments, I must go and check my investments. You are here. Because some of you, the money has not amplified what is inside of you. Yeah. Some of you, you are staying with that lady that you are staying with. It's because you have no money. Yeah. <laughs> she is helping you and sustaining you. She is cooking in Buya there for you. That's why you are a good man. And everybody thinks, oh, what a good man. A good man who loves his, no, the man is just broke. He has no way to go. <laughs> Let that man have money, you will see his nature. Oh yeah, I know men. I'm a man, I know men. <laughs> a man is a dangerous animal with the blessings of God minus the presence of God. Oh yeah, very dangerous. He will show off. He will buy these toys called cars and show off. Yeah, we used to call it sticking out your elbow, kungunya. He would put off his kungunya by the window and drive. And he would chase all these small girls looking for them. All these, they would be full in the car. Mm. A fool and his money. <laughs> yeah, whatever he appears, oh, everybody would be talking. Cho, cho is car. Cho, 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 cho. And the person they are called Cho is 70 years old. <laughs> May God help you. That is, God enlarges you in this next season that you ask that the hand of God be with you. That the hand of God be there to protect you. We say the hand of God speaks of what, church? Two things. It speaks of the power as well as the blessing, the presence of God. Judge Joshua 4, verse 24, reads, That all the peoples of the earth may know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty that you may fear the Lord your God forever. The hand of God. 
So having been blessed by God because you have been an honorable person, make sure that the hand of God is there to protect you. Acts 11, 21. The hand of the Lord was with them and a great number believed and turned to the Lord. So the hand of the Lord is very key to what God is doing in your life. Otherwise, you will receive those blessings and you will be a miserable person. Can we close with point number four? Stand, please. Oh, that you keep me from evil. Both poor people and rich people face temptations. But I dare say this, that the temptations are greater to a rich man than to a poor man who is a Christian. Two men, both of them Christians, one is poor, one is rich. A rich one faces more temptations than a poor. The poor man's temptations are to steal sometimes and, uh, and to envy. But the rich man, the temptations present themselves to him. Yeah, then there are many. And therefore, you need to be kept from evil. That God will keep you and keep me from evil. So when God begins to enlarge your territory, you are invading, therefore, the devil's territory. Because he's taken away from the devil. And therefore, you enter into a new zone. Your boyfriend seems to love you these days. It is because that dude has nothing. He is hoping that you can sustain him. <laughs> he has nothing. He's holding on to you. He is seeing more hope in you than in himself. <laughs> yeah, so. They are what we call perils of spiritual success. Perils of spiritual success. It means this, that if your success is not hedged by the presence of God, it will send you to hell. Straight. Coming from God and yet leading you to hell. Mm. There have been many successful people that got their success through the principles of God. But they are far away from God because they forgot to hedge their success. And they forgot the hand of God in their lives. Blessings, if not managed well, can send you literally to hell. I have seen many people, let me use the word here, choked by the blessings. Blessings can choke you. Mm. They're too much for you. Because your capacity has not been enlarged to contain. I have a message called capacity. Anything that is given to an individual without capacity to contain it, will go to waste. I have a, a jug here, a mug here. This mug can contain so much liquid. If I pour more than what this mug can contain, guess what? It's waste. And therefore, it is up to you to build your capacity. So that blessings don't end up choking you. Yeah. If 10 billion US dollars fell on you, say today, you are given, it's yours. If you have no capacity, you will destroy yourself and destroy everybody around you. Yeah. And that's why you see these guys moving in town. And I don't want to mention their names, some of them are dead now. <laughs> no capacity. Yeah. No capacity. I knew a certain man who worked in a, in, a certain, uh, in a certain field. Come November, when bonuses were bonuses, when he got paid, he will hire two taxis, put a, a suit, sorry, shoes in one of them, and he will put one. In there. 
He must leave him. It's too much. Just to get an extra salary increase, just that he must destroy that man. Literally destroy. Because the body says you can't contain this. Just waste it, please. Lose it quickly. Lose it because capacity is not there. It's like a blessing falling on a person who has not developed character. The first thing if the married person is that they want to leave their wife. That's the first thing that comes. All men are similar. <laughs> I don't know what's with the wife that the man wants to leave the wife. So the man there who may be sitting next to you with you today is because he has nothing. <laughs> Judge him when he now has money. He's just staying there because there is no amplifier in his life. Once money comes to amplify, watch how he behaves. This boyfriend that you pray about thinking that he loves you, oh no, let that fool get money. <laughs> you will see him disappear, no phone calls, nothing. Uh, three weeks, when you phone him, he say, hello, don't call me, I will call you, I'm too busy. And you will never hear of that. Those are blessings that have fallen in the hands of a fool. So as we conclude, Jabez was a man of honor more than his brothers. And therefore, it is that honor that changed his life. And his prayer is number one, oh, that you will bless me indeed. Number two, oh, that you would enlarge my territory. And number three, oh, that your hand will be with me. And number four, oh, that you will keep me from evil. Now that you've blessed me, keep me from evil. And that's why it's important to pray for this thing called honor in your life. Make sure you cultivate it in every facet of your life, in your relationships with people that are above you and below you. Maintain this thing called honor because the blessings that have been leaving you, they have been leaving you because there's no platform for them to land. And that platform is honor. Develop honor, they will land and stay with you because God can count on you if you're a man or a woman of honor. Say amen. amen. I want you to turn now, face your neighbor and join hands. You are praying with that person today. And you are praying over these six things. You are praying and asking the Holy Spirit to guide you in honoring the following. These people are very important to honor. Let's start with honoring God. Honoring God does not mean, I honor you God, I honor, no. no. When you honor God, you obey his precepts. It's obedience to what he says. Saying I honor you and you are not obeying, you are declaring with your lips, but your heart is far away. May we honor God. Let's pray on that prayer, honoring God. Let's start with that one. Father, here I am. My prayer is, Lord, that I will honor God. I will honor God. Honor God in everything that I do. Everything that I say. Everywhere where I go. I will honor the true and living God. Help me to bring honor to you. Help me to bring honor in what I say, in what I do, where I go. May I bring honor to you. By the God of Israel, God of Israel, where I have brought dishonor, forgive. Where I have walked in dishonor, forgive. Precious God, merciful God, let it be so. In the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord. 
Jesus. Oh, bless you. Right. Number one is done. Number two, find a person very close to you there. Just hold them and say, I prayed with you, ma'am. Say, let me find somebody else. Mm. Pray that you will honor Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going nowhere unless we learn to honor Christ. Lift him up in everything we do. How do we lift him up? By following his precepts. It's very important to honor Christ in your life as a Christian. You honor him, he will honor you. And when he honors you, oh, no one can ignore you. Pray and pray with your neighbor there that you honor Christ. Father, here I am, that you teach me to honor Christ. Christ is my Lord, to surrender every facet of my life to you, my Lord Jesus, that I will learn, that I will know to honor you in the name of Jesus. Oh, God of grace, God of mercy, as I honor Christ, that indeed he will lift us up in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. That we seek to honor you in our works, in our deeds, in our speech, in our actions. May you truly be honored in my life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Be honored in our lives. Be lifted up in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. Number three. Number three. Find somebody else as well. Number three. Find a person number three there. Honor church officers. There is a scripture there. All of them have scriptures. Let the elders who rule well be counted worthy. Always remember to respect and honor people that are leaders in church. You may not like them. You may not like their style. You may like, not like the way they do things. But it is to your benefit that you honor them. Yeah, because they've been anointed there. And if you don't honor them, you will never go anywhere in life. Yeah, don't worship them, please. My balance is always clear. Don't worship a pastor, a bishop. Don't worship him. Just to honor. Honor is key. Let's pray. Father, we honor those that rule over us. We honor fellow ministers. We honor other leaders. We honor them as servants of God. Where we have displayed dishonor, forgive. Where we have walked in dishonor, forgive. Where we have pulled down unnecessarily, forgive us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We honor your servants that preach your way, that labor in the word and in the doctrine. In the word and the doctrine. May we esteem highly such leaders in the name of Jesus. May we honor such men and such women in Jesus' mighty name. Great honor in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Number four, honor the king. Some of you think that when you pray for the leader of the nation, the president, you are now, we are now ZANU PF. No. No. The Bible commands you, commands you that you pray for leaders. And for Christians, you, you find this very difficult especially when you don't like the party. <laughs> so you don't know that is scriptural. By praying for them, you are not praying that they, they be in power, no. You are just praying for them because it's good that they, they be there. It's good that God gives them wisdom to run the nation. Uh -huh. If you don't pray for them, you're in trouble. Okay, it's easy to pull them down. It's difficult to pray for them. Yeah. Yeah, already the moment I say pray for them, you say, my God, I want to leave the country because of these people. So you mean I should pray for them? I am teaching you the Bible. Yeah. Uh, that's all I'm here to teach you. I'm not saying today you are this party or MTC or Zanu. No, I'm just saying anybody there. Okay, 
must be prayed for because the Bible commands that we pray for them. And charismatics don't understand this. And therefore they fight this. <laughs> but today, since you are here, you will pray. Okay, pray for the president. Pray for the vice president. Pray for the cabinet ministers. Yeah, pray for them. If you know them by name, mention them. Okay, pray for them that God will give them wisdom to run this nation. That if ever there is any darkness in their minds, God will disperse that darkness and not the light of God. I know you're thinking, what? <laughs> no, it's scriptural. Scriptural. That means what you've been doing is at scriptural. And therefore you find it very difficult, even in your faces right now. They're thinking, oh my God. But it is scriptural to say that, to pray. Yeah, Americans pray for their presidents. If you not hear that, yeah. They pray for all these corrupt presidents in America. They pray for them. It is only in Zimbabwe that when you say pray for your president, people freak out. They think, what? The Bible says you must pray for them. I'm not carrying favor from any, anyone. I am apolitical. I have never been. But I'm just teaching what the Bible says. If I don't teach you what the Bible says, I will lead you into error. Right. Now, with all happiness and joy, you pray for him. <laughs> Let's pray. <laughs> Father, we pray for our president, the president of the Republic of Zimbabwe. We lift him up and his family before you. We pray for long life. We pray for the blessings of God. We pray for the wisdom that God gives them to run this nation and to run it efficiently. In Jesus' name, pray for our protection. In his going out, in his coming in, we pray for strong protection. In the name of Jesus, your guiding hand upon them. In Jesus' name, we pray for the cabinet ministers. Ministers, we pray for members of parliament. Each one of them, both from all, from the two houses, pray that you sustain them. We pray for wisdom to lead, knowledge, and understanding. Let it be their portion. In the name of Jesus, may the grace of God abound over them. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless your name. We honor your name. In the name of Jesus, thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. So next time you meet anybody, be it your president, honor them. Very important to honor them. Yeah. Honor them. Don't greet them while you're seated down. Stand up and greet them. Because it's manners. In the Bible, you will see God demands that. Demands that of Pontius Pilate. Demands that of Caesar. That if you met Caesar, you must honor Caesar. <laughs> it's only Zimbabweans that have gone through much that find it very difficult. Yeah. May I honor the president? I've been with him for 45 minutes. The two of us sit it down. Hmm. Sit it down. I said, come and sit next to me. So I went and sat next to me. We chatted. Hmm. Chatted. Talked and talked and talked. The two of us, too. too, too. Hmm. Close it. Hmm. Chatted and, until I said, you say, I'm catching a plane. Can I leave, please? So I had to leave. We would have talked for some time. Long time. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't make you this or that. It just makes you a good citizen. Yes. Hey, because you are honoring. And when God sees you honoring your leaders, ah, God will lift you up. Yeah. By saying that, I don't mean you are, I'm not telling you to vote for who here. No, the vote is private. Hey, please, by talking this way, I'm simply saying your vote is private, but whoever gets into power there, you better honor them. Mm. Yeah. Very important. Please talk to your neighbor and say, honor leaders. Mm. Don't be a rebellious person and always rebellious. Number five, honor the elderly and widows. Ah, it's very important. Honor the elders and widows. Find point, uh, person number five there. You're praying for the elderly and the widows that they be honored. Mm.
if you know of any elderly person or a widow and you happen to have extra resources, be it groceries and you know a widow and a widow indeed, you buy them something and say, I thought to bless you. Yeah, I thought to give you something and, and bless you and empower you with that. It's, it's a scriptural thing that will open certain doors in your life as you, as you honor with us. Say amen. All right, let's pray. Hmm. Father, here we are. We pray that you teach us to honor the elderly. Teach us to honor the widows as well. Those that are widows indeed, according to your word. We pray that indeed there will be great honor in our life. Great grace in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Oh, dear God, God of grace, and God of mercy, and God of honor, we thank you. We bless you. We praise you in the name of Jesus. Oh, we lift up your name. We glorify your name. We pray, dear God, that you teach us these principles of honoring widows, honoring those that are widows indeed, honoring the elderly in our midst today. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, we honor you, we magnify your name. We extol your name in the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. Oh, Jesus' name, amen. So the elderly are key to, finally, number six, honor parents. On this one, I want you to take time to pray for your parents. Okay, if you say your parents are late, pray for those that represent them. It could be your elder brother, elder sister. Pray for them because they stand in the room of your parents. Pray for them. Pray that you'll be well with them. Pray that they live long. Even if they haven't given you money that you're asking for, still pray for them. Parents are key. Let's take time to pray as we honor our parents. Father, we honor our loved ones in the name of Jesus, our parents. Father, the parents represented here by these great men and women, we lift them up give you honor we give you glory in jesus mighty name thank you lord jesus lift up parents we pray long life those that are not well in body i pray that you'd watch over them and sustain them keep them in jesus mighty name oh god bless parents those that are not well in body touch mend and heal them, restore them, make them whole. In Jesus' mighty name. Great grace, great grace, great grace. In the name of Jesus. Mighty grace upon our parents. Long life. In Jesus' name. Oh, dear God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we bless your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. Some of you, if you have been wayward and you were very mean and rude to your parents, you may need to go and apologize because that then stops the flow of blessing in your life. The last prayer point is simple, the message that we have been preaching on today. The message is, all oh, that you bless me, all oh, that you enlarge my territories, that you keep me from evil. Is that not so? But as we pray concerning those that indeed you are praying for yourself, that God will enlarge you. First of all, we have prayed for honor here in these areas. I believe honor is on you today. Pray there for Jabez prayer. All that you would bless me in thee, all that you would enlarge my territory, all that your hand will be with me, and that he will keep you from evil when you are prospering. Yeah, you love evil when you have money. Mm. Please touch your neighbor and say, Jengao Maba Bimal. Maba Bimad. Can you relationship between Mali? May God help you. All right, lift up your hands. Let's pray. 
let it be your prayer. I won't lead you in that. It depends on how much you, you need God to bless you. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Bless me with all spiritual blessings, all natural blessings. In the name of Jesus, may your blessings be strong over my life. May your blessings be mighty over my life. Bless me in my going out. Bless me in my coming in. Bless me in my sitting down. Bless me in my standing up. Bless me in the morning. Bless me at midnight. Bless me in the afternoon. Bless me in the evening. May your blessings be pronounced over my life. Bless me in a large way. Empower me to succeed. All oh, that you may enlarge my territories, that my territories will be enlarged, that everything I touch will increase and multiply. The ministry will increase and multiply. The resources will increase and multiply. Friendships will increase and multiply. Everything, the grace will increase and multiply. The anointing will increase and multiply. The wisdom will increase and multiply. Oh God, enlarge my territories. Anything that I possess will increase and multiply. In the name of Jesus. Oh, that your hand would be with me. Your presence, your power to protect, your grace. But indeed, it will be with me. In the name of Jesus. God of mercy. Indeed, Lord. Oh, God of honor, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, that you keep me from evil. Keep me from evil. Keep me from evil. May your blessings never drive me to evil. May your blessings drive me to your presence. May your blessings drive me to your, into your presence. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We honor you. We glorify your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lift up your hands now. May the blessings that came upon Jabez come upon you too. In the name of Jesus. May the honor that was upon Jabez be your honor too. May you honor all these facets of honor of, of people that need to be honored. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Why don't you put your hands together like this? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please take your seats. We're about to go home. We have envelopes here. I came with mine already written. I trust that you are doing what I do here. One for the building. One for the...